Okay, hi, this is uh, Jason with RPC Electronics. Uh, this is lesson two. I'm going to show you some of the uh, tools in the schematic editor. So let's uh, let's just dive right on into it. I'm going to open up a uh, blank schematic that I've got already saved under uh, the lesson two folder. Um, let's start with the add tool. The add tool is what we're going to use to add parts to the schematic. Um, go ahead and click on that. It takes Eagle a few seconds usually to read in the library files and here's all of our available parts uh, all the available libraries that are saved on this particular computer uh, Eagle uh, from the point where you download it on has a pretty wide extensive uh, listing of parts that you can uh, choose from right off the bat uh, you have the ability to uh, make custom parts as well and we'll We'll get into some of that later on in the tutorial, but for now we're just going to use some of the parts that are already here. Uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and pick something common, and we'll stick that on the schematic as uh, something to try or just something to work with. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, go in here and pick a uh, DB9 connector, a female DB9 connector. I think most people are familiar with. Double click on that, and that will bring up our part. And I'm, you'll notice immediately that the part is just hovering over the schematic editor uh, on the end of the mouse pointer. And if I click once, it's going to put one down. And you'll notice I still have it, so I can click twice, three times, however many times you want to add that particular part. So the best way that I found to uh, get the part to go away from the mouse pointer is click these, this little four-ended arrow called the Move Tool click that once you'll notice that the part has gone away from the mouse pointer and that will bring us into uh, the move tool um, the move tool is obviously is used for moving parts around uh, you can move single parts as well as groups of parts uh, in this case I'm just gonna click and move this particular part actually allows you to move these individual pins the nine pins individually so when I click on this X3-1 I'm actually going to move just pin 1 of X3 and you'll see I'm just moving that part around now I'm going to bring that back now let's say I want to move all these together that's pretty easy to do with the group tool and that's this square tool with the dotted lines I'm going to click on that group tool now I'm going to click hold and drag so I highlight over top all of those pins and I'm going to let go and you'll notice that it's gone bright red the parts gone bright red to show that, that those pins or that those parts have been highlighted and then I'm going to click the move tool and then here's where it's a little bit tricky you gotta remember to right click and when you right click it's gonna come up and say you have many options here but the one we're looking for is the move group we're gonna click on move group and now you'll notice that all those pins are being moved together with the mouse pointer so let's just say we're gonna move them down here so we'll click once and that's gonna put the part now where we've uh, where we've just clicked so that's uh, that's the easiest way to move groups now I could always grab all of these together and move these as well um, the next uh, useful tool would be the delete tool and you'll use this quite a bit as you uh, make changes and you'll notice that as I click I'm deleting these pins now again as in when we were moving we can move these one at a time when we're deleting we have to delete one of these at a time as well and you'll notice that nine clicks and I've just deleted that entire connector and I can do the same thing with these two but I'm gonna leave those alone um, another useful tool that uh, you'll use a lot of times for like discrete components for example is the copy tool click on the copy tool now we're gonna click on this part and it's gonna actually make a copy of the part now in this case it's actually going to make a entire copy of all nine pins of this connector because it's still treated as a single part even though the pins are individual and I'm just going to click one more time and there we go we've just copied that part um, another uh, uh, two more tools that are used quite a bit is the name tool and the value tool name tool is just that it's going to allow us to name the part this particular part is already by default called X3. We could change that to just DB9, for example, and click OK. And now the name of the part has been changed to DB9. The pin numbers are retained. And we can do that with any of these. 
and uh, the value tool is used to change the value of the connector for example let's let's say we've got a capacitor that we've added let's let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that I'm gonna go down here to the RCL library which is resistor capacitor and inductor and let's grab a capacitor part here real quick I'm gonna click and add this now I'm gonna use the value tool and click on that and that's gonna allow me to tell the or to display the value of this capacitor in this case let's say this is gonna be a one microfarad capacitor I click OK and you'll notice that that value has been added to the capacitor here and you can do that for every part in the schematic if you want and that's a big big help when you're uh, when you're in the process of actually building what you've designed um, easy reference to go back you can actually see what the value of that particular part is and of course the corresponding name is here as well so the value and name come together to uh, represent that particular part so all right that's uh, that's it for uh, for lesson two in lesson three we'll expand a little more on on the tools and we'll get into actually drawing a, uh, a basic schematic so we'll see you then thanks a lot